Hello, what is up everybody? This is Maverick and welcome to Maverick Tech and in this video we're going to be building a 23,000 rupees gaming PC that is going to completely wreck that what you think a 20,000 rupees PC can do. To start off with the processor, I went with the Intel Core i3-3220 which is a third generation Intel Ivy Bridge processor clocking at just 3.3 GHz and of course two cores and four threads like all the other i3s which give us a great deal of advantage in this budget. A 22 nanometer architecture with only 55 TDP that total drone power for you has not pushing on the PSU. Now it already comes with the Intel HD Graphics 2500 but we wouldn't be using that. It supports maximum of 32 gigs of DDR3 memory clocked at 1333 or 1600 MHz that's its FSP. Now this processor comes at just the price of Rs 3890 and packs muscle with it. Moving on to the motherboard, I had a really hard time finding a motherboard provider that didn't went for the standard Intel motherboards so after scrolling through hours and hours I found the Osus H61 MCS. This motherboard given at a price of just 3950 from Amazon is a bang for its buck. Of course, it supports all the second and as well as third generation Intel CPUs and is giving you the apt motherboard for future upgradability. It has two RAM slots supporting DDR3 memory, that is 1333 or 1600 MHz, one PCI Express 3 slot 3.0 for the GPU of course, and two PCI Express 2.0 slots, four SATA ports and of 3 GB a second, then for the USB it has six USB ports, uh, there are of course 2.0 ports, four at the back uh, panel and two at the mid board. Combined with the OSIS anti-surge and UV bio and network eye control, we couldn't go wrong with this motherboard. Next up for the RAM, I went with the Corsair 4GB DDR3 1600MHz. Now you would argue that most of the AAA titles require 8 gigs of RAM, but just see the budget constraint in which we are building this system. Thus 4GB of memory isn't the end of the world, it still has surprises left in it. Moreover, the games you tested showed little sign of lag or stuttering because of shortage of memory. And you can always update RAM in the future as there are two slots in the motherboard. You could install a 8GB in the second slot and get 12GB of DDR3 memory or install a 4GB in the other one and get 8GB dual channel memory. The RAM came just as a price of 1890 and pretty good off from cost to cost. And for the hard disk I went with a 500GB of CK. Again, we are working on a budget and most of our parents point and tell us to boy, cut the fat, a budget here. So 500GB is for now more than enough for a person who is building a 23,000 system. So this is what he would go for. And he can always upgrade in the future. So spinning at 7200RPM, I picked it up just for 1890 as well. Now for the powerhouse or in other words, the GPU, I went with the all-time bestseller, the Gainworth GTX 750Ti edition, 2GB edition. This is the king of the budget cards. At the time when the RX 460 was released and Big Brother 1050 was about to come on the shell of Nvidia, the 750Ti took the major share of budget gaming systems. Its ability to not bottleneck medium to high end CPUs as well as low to medium CPUs made it everyone's first choice. Spec wise, it has 640 CUDA cores. Disclaimer Titan X has more than 2000 CUDA cores. Just see the difference. Not bad. It is clocked at 1050 MHz which is its base clock and turbos up to 1185 MHz. It has 2 GB of buffer memory which is ample for playing games at 1080p medium to high setting and getting respectable frames. The card came at a price of 7990 which I still consider to be costly given the time period we are in. I uh, picked it up from cost to cost. Now for the power supply, now I could have gone with the Zebronix 450 water power supply coming at just the price of 400 but buying a Zebronix power supply is equivalent to connecting your PC directly somehow hypothetically to the socket. So I went with the Cooler Master 450 watts 880 plus drone certified at 2340 from cost to cost again. This power supply is the sweet spot of PSU in PC gaming. It provides a perfect way for future upgradability and looks good as well. Now just like the icing on the cake for the case, I went with the GSM Mora E from cost to cost coming at just the price of 490. It came in white. This probably in the best case, but it gets the job done. So guys, that is pretty much the build. Now I'll be shutting up and leaving you guys with the benchmarks. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And to see my upcoming videos, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps. Comment down below. Let's go for 5 likes on this video guys. That would be awesome. I love you guys. Maverick out.